push it back up. And then she closed the door again and she said, it's off now. And the lights are off. I don't know, honey, but maybe it, I don't know. I don't know. As she said, she just was concerned about it. And glad she made her call us right away. But she didn't know whether we were even aware of it. And, but she said as she was talking to me and reading, you know, the inside and messing with things, when I said, no, we don't know anything about that, she, she said, yes, it did seem like something had been a jar and something wasn't closed all the way. But I did that the night before, so it would You filled the ice thing the night before? Yeah, I did that the night before. So it wasn't beeping this morning. I mean, if it, and especially when I went back inside to get my, you know, to get um, the stuff for the community. If I had been beeping, I would have noticed it. But what did you go back in to get? The stuff for the camper. Did so you I, open the door for anything? No.
inflammatory no wooden car used to be. Since your people used to rap a lot anyway. <laughs> Maybe you can walk on down here and make a payment on this car. I don't understand. For every good thing that's ever happened in your life, I bet you did not once think about a racial thing in your life when a good thing was happening. Every once there was a like, this is the best soup ever. Oh, I fucking hate Mexicans. <laughs>
why I said I could. You could see it off the highway, but there's no exit. And they they caution you not to stop along a highway to go access something. It's different if you're on a, like a frontage road or something like that. And Effingham. That's where the giant cross is. Well, that's also where I believe the halfway point is to um, Youngstown. I think. I think that's what we used to use as the Germany. 
the news story featured reports from several farmers that they had seen low-flying planes with American insignia over their fields, and then later noticed a large number of new beetles. Propaganda posters appeared all over the country. American beetles are meant to destroy our harvest. They threaten your livelihood. Your fight against this American pest is a fight for peace. It was important because potatoes were a staple part of the German diet, and in the hard years after the war, food was already scarce. Erhard Geisler was a young man living in Leipzig, in the south of East Germany. I remember uh, our family, father, mother and I, we had as breakfast one potato, and therefore all were very shocked to learn that this mass occurrence of beetles, which destroy the potato plants, are destroying our food supply. Ingmar Materna was 18 and living in Ludwigslust, near the border with West Germany. The London in Spanish We have just survived the Second World War. I had looked under all four occupying towers, and we'd been through a lot. So, if there were potato beetles, we needed to get rid of them, so we had enough potatoes. It was as simple as that. And so the young people of East Germany went out into the fields to fight the imperialist threat. We were sent out into the fields in the afternoons after school to pick them up. We would go down the rows of plants and everyone would try to collect as many beetles and larvae as possible and put them in pots or little glass jars. The beetles were known as Annie Yankee beetles. Anti-American feeling was high. As a popular song at the time said, many East Germans thought the Yankees should go home. Annie's At that time, 
there was a lot of air traffic between West Germany and Berlin, for instance, during the, the blockade of West Berlin by the Soviets. And so a lot of people always watched these American aircraft. And so it was quite convincing when the government told people these people above in the aircraft are distributing these dangerous beetles. And with the Cold War and the start of the Korean War, the idea of American aggression against the Eastern Bloc didn't feel far-fetched. Das sind nun wieder damit zusammen, dass ja der Kalte Krieg lief. It had to do with the fact that it was the Cold War at the time. And every possible negative thing you could say about the Americans was turned into propaganda. Probably some of the stories were true, and some of them definitely weren't. This Beatles story was one of the ones that wasn't. But you can't say that East German propaganda was all made up, or that it was all lies. Some of it was true. Sometimes propaganda is about education. And was there any factual basis for those rumors? Were the Americans really dropping Beatles out of planes? No. No, no factual Beatles at all. I assume that it was a two-fold objective. First, to cover the inability and inefficiency of the government to fight against the Beatles. And the second was to join the Soviet Union in the Cold War and to have an additional accusation against the imperialists. It wasn't the first time that potato beetles had been considered as a weapon of war. The first people to think about it had been the French during the First World War. And in the Second World War, both the British and the Germans had been worried that the other might have used potato beetles as a biological weapon. German scientists even got as far as testing dropping beetles out of planes. They bred them and they performed three experiments in the region of Korea where the potato beetles were disseminated of airplanes. As a result, was disappointing because in the meantime all these beetles went off and they could not be counted in the field and in consequence nothing happened and the beetles had not oh, been used as warfare agents and oh, yeah. this is who until today to my knowledge potato beetles have been never used as biological warfare agents <laughs> Service. It's 22 hours GMT. Oh, yeah, I'm Oliver Conway, and this is the newsroom coming up. <laughs> At least 235 people have been killed in Egypt after the security forces stormed two protest camps. Supporters of the ousted president say 2,000 people died. We've made a barricade and we're standing in front of it. We didn't do anything. We had our hands up in the air. Why are they killing us? What have we done? <laughs> 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 
out from Cairo. Also today, Bradley Manning, the American soldier who leaked classified documents, has told the court his actions hurt the United States and he was sorry. And later. We can actually start to see the very core changes we see in genes and the DNA of cancers. Scientists report a significant milestone for cancer research. First news update with Judy. BBC News with Julie Kampler. The Egyptian security forces have carried out a day-long assault in Cairo on camps of supporters loyal to the ousted President Mohamed Morsi with a heavy loss of life. By evening, the security forces, backed by bulldozers, had seized control of the main camp near the Rabah al adawiya Mosque. Anthony Bell reports from Cairo. on the streets of Cairo. Early this morning, security forces moved in to disperse two protest camps where supporters of the Muslim Brotherhood President Mohamed Morsi have been holding out for weeks. There were violent clashes between riot police and the protesters. Shots were fired amidst clouds of tear gas. The authorities say they're now in control of both camps. The health ministry said that across Egypt, 278 people have been killed. Many more are injured. But the Muslim Brotherhood has said more than 2,000 people died in the clashes. The interior minister, Mohammed Ibrahim, said security forces were fired upon. When we attacked the camps, we were, the forces were attacked. We used loudspeakers to warn people, and we asked them and, uh, make them to leave peacefully. We used a water cannon. We carried on for a while and then we used tear gas and unfortunately we, we were faced with heavy firing that was led to the martyrdom of a number of officers and we apprehended a number of elements who were armed. An overnight curfew is now in force in Cairo and a number of other cities after the authorities said they needed to restore order and stability. The BBC correspondent says the streets of the capital are now eerily deserted. The United States has strongly condemned the violence against the protesters. The Secretary of State, John Kerry, warned that the day's events had made a political solution more difficult. Bradley Manning, the U.S. soldier convicted of handing hundreds of thousands of secret documents to the WikiLeaks organization, has spoken for the first time during his trial. Private Manning told the sentence hearing he was sorry he had hurt people at the United States. David Willis reports from Fort Meade in Maryland. Reading from a prepared speech and speaking directly to the judge, Manning said he was sorry that he hurt people and apologized for what he called the unexpected results of his actions. He confirmed that he'd been dealing with a lot of issues at the time of the leaking, issues which caused him difficulties. Nonetheless, he failed to appreciate the broader consequences of his actions. He thought they would help people, he said, rather than hurt them. I should have worked from inside the system instead, he said. News from the BBC. The government in Mali has promoted to the rank of general an army captain who led a coup last year that destabilized the West African country. Human rights groups have condemned the decision to.